Uh, this is May 2nd, 2016. It is 4.30 p.m. We are in the Thomas J. Smith Council Chambers. Um, we're giving away a tenure award, proclamation, and number three, a consideration of a general obligation parking lot improvements loan agreement and a principal amount not to exceed $70,000. This is a CIP item. Uh, it was approved as part of the budget uh, to do an asphalt overlay or down at the Washington and 6th Street. Actually, some of this funds will end up as we've had a cost overrun the Washington and 3rd Street ramp uh, to do that one as well. And so it'll be, end up being split between the two. Uh, it is part of the bond issue that is also on the agenda that we're looking for for financing 2.2 million is it 2.25 million um, in for the 2016 a bond issue that's on this agenda as well we had previously talked about it but as we talked about it uh, they Travis didn't separate it out as a he had it included under the streets portion uh, this is not a street issue it needs to be treated separately so we had to do a separate hearing that identified it in the uh, general corporate purpose section as opposed to an essential corporate purpose section you guys uh, are you guys good with that any problems no no problem yep. good. Good. okay then uh, the consent we've got uh, the cascade bridge lighting you guys need anything on that well, okay. maybe they should explain it so people know what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have assumed that everybody was here last week. I apologize. That was Mayor, that Council, Mr. That was City my Manager, first thought, uh, Chris Clements, Operations Manager for Public Works. Um, what we have here is the the lighting on uh, Cascade Bridge are out on the edges of it, going down, and with the bridge being closed to traffic. Um, a lion can no longer get their equipment out there to change the bulbs and stuff when they burn out. Um, what they're proposing and, and what Public Works is proposing with them is putting a little bigger lights and moving into existing poles on both ends of the bridge um, uh, to allow for the bigger lights will allow for to get the light clear out to the centers. Um, uh, the lights that are existing there will stay. Um, the globes and everything will not be removed. They just will no longer be uh, in service. Good deal. You guys good? Thank you, Chris. So it's just a matter of a safety issue. It's not really for enhancing the beauty of the bridge or anything like that. Correct? Yes. Okay. You did skip an item. The second, that resolution authorizing and approving the bond purchase agreements. Um, I did want to hand out something on that to you, too. Please do. I didn't realize you were going to allow me to cover both of them at one time. What I wanted to get you on this was a savings analysis, and this is, has to do with more of the 2016B, um, the refinancing of the 2007 bond issue. Uh, what Travis put together was looking at the potential savings. Um, on page one there, you, it looked at the existing bond payments, principal and interest that would occur over the life of that uh, borrowing, uh, and then the new bond payments and the estimated savings. He's looking at about $117,000 in that savings to refinance. Um, and then he did some taking a look at when we do look at refundings, what are the, the standards for are there enough savings to justify doing this or not? Um, our, the minimum, minimum present savings to have is in that 3% range, which would have to have about 57,000. Um, and then they, there's a, dis, a discussion about negative arbitrage, which has to do with 
uh, as you can potentially earn some interest in the meantime when you're doing an advance refunding a year in advance. Um, there has to be a higher level of savings to justify uh, that to make sure in, in avoidance of arbitrage. And even that, with that, um, they're showing there that the if we do do the savings, the potential interest earnings, what we're looking at over the next year, $12,000 versus the savings at 117000 I think is a comparison that he's doing on that, uh, coming with that 11% uh, figure. Um, the negative arbitrage is a percentage of present value savings. Um, the target, we don't have anything in our policy that addresses specifically that negative arbitrage measurement. Uh, where communities that do have it put it at a 50% negative arbitrage value, so we are well underneath that. If the, the arbitrage or the earnings that you would earn compared to the savings was more than half of, was, was more than half of the savings that you would have, they don't, it, it's not recommended to do the refinancing. We're nowhere near that threshold. All the analysis that, w that uh, we would do would justify moving, having a consideration of doing the refinancing at this point. Um, again, the, the follow-up sheets are just giving you an idea of the second, the page two is the new financing um, and what we're looking for for principal and interest payments. And uh, for your perusal, you can see the sources and uses of funds on the, on the following pages. Um, we figured that in, that's already been figured in to make sure that we can stay within our debt service um, or what we have coming in for revenues into the debt service fund uh, from property taxes and other sources and maintain our existing debt levy. Um, these all work well within that, and actually we'll have a little bit of cushion uh, as we move forward based off of the doing the refinancing. And it doesn't extend the life of it doesn't the extend, the refinanced one does not extend the life. It's doing the same uh, payment, repayment schedule. I think that's important. So anyway, the, th the thing, this is, we had looked last year at uh, whether to, to refinance the same bond issue. There was 3% savings at that time. There was not a 5% level. It was enough to justify consideration, but not enough to really say this is something that you, it's a, a slam dunk that you do it now. Um, again, this is an advanced refunding by a year. And as I was talking with Travis about where this stands right now, uh, the kind of movement that would have to occur over the course of the next year to have made it a bad deal to refinance now versus a year from now. If interest rates go up a quarter percent, 25 basis points, uh, that would have the type of movement in the refinancing uh, that we would uh, pretty much net out. And as a even in the, the environment that we've had recently in January, it was 25 basis points higher. Uh, for what the, was actually being seen in the bond market. We've come down by the, the equivalent of about 25 <coughs> basis points in terms of financing just over the last couple of months. Um, you look at the rate environment for what the Fed is considering doing over the course of the next year, they're still in discussion about having two 25 basis points movements up over the course of the next year. There's no, there's nothing that's set in stone that that will happen, but there is good reason to believe that this is a, I mean, it's, it's just a good environment to go ahead and do the refinancing now as opposed to waiting. The email you sent us about the, the uh, ratings. Yes. Does that have an effect on this? Um, that's taken into account as he's looked at that, and that's, that is part of it. We did get a, uh, we haven't had a final rating yet. So that's not to be out there. That's a preliminary. Yeah. When, when, do, we, when do we get that final rating? Uh, I would assume that that would get published here in the next next few days. They've, they've moved it forward to get it out there and published, but it hasn't happened yet. But regardless, we, we did stand in, in pretty good stead with this, this review process. Good deal. Are you guys
guys uh, good? Saves money. Okay. I agree. All right. Uh, next is uh, number two. Uh, resolution authorizing cancellation of contract number 7042. An agreement between Burlington Urban Service and Hope Haven Inc. for the leasing of vehicles as part of both system uh, public transportation. Didn't sound like that that arrangement didn't work out too good. Uh, that's a summary. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, uh, in June of last year, we approved a three-year agreement between us and Hope Haven. It was hoped that it'd be a win-win situation. Uh, essentially, they were going to pay us uh, $1,200 per year. They were going to take care of the fuel. We were going to take care of uh, insurance and maintenance. And uh, it would, we were going to be allowed to take the statistics that they had added to ours, which will help the STA and the FTA. That was in concept. In reality, after nine months, I uh, met with, with Bob and Bartles at, at Hope Haven, and they'd only put uh, 284 rides and 425 miles on the vehicle, and our costs we'd spent so far were um, tw a, little, tw a little over 28, almost $2,900. So. Based on their limited usage and our expense, uh, we both felt it was probably in the best interest of both parties to dissolve or cancel the contract. Uh, it was a three-year contract, uh, but the, either party could cancel in 90 days, and essentially we're, that's what this resolution is doing, putting that into effect. Okay. Well, again, that's too bad the partnership didn't work out, but uh, it's best to walk probably. away well. We tried. I, I don't think there was any need to continue because we weren't going to make substantial probably substantial progress. So. Thanks for checking on that, Steve. No. You guys good? Yep. Okay, uh, next is the resolution authorizing discharging weapons at 1110 Agency Street uh, for service purposes. It's uh, Gun RX. Who's? And that, uh, we had a request from the owner of Gun RX, uh, Mike Roundtree, who's at 1110 Agency Street. Um, for permission to discharge weapons as part of his service and repair. He does uh, service and repair of firearms at this location. Uh, he has a federal firearms license to operate there. Um, and part of his uh, service or repair um, is, would be checking to make sure the gun operates uh, correctly after he does service on it. And um, so he would uh, fire into an appropriate indoor test fire chamber or shooting drum uh, for the manufacturer specs uh, to ensure his repair is done correctly. Um, and chapter 51.09 of the city code does uh, state in order for anyone to discharge weapons uh, within the city limits, they require written consent of the city council. Uh, so that is why the resolution is before you is uh, permission for this licensed business to uh, do that uh, on a limited scope for his service business. So the words I wanted to see inside. So, uh, council, does police department have any statement about this? Or? No, thanks for asking. But Eric could check with me, and we discuss this in detail. And yeah, I'm I'm very aware of these devices and how they work. We actually have one at the police department. We don't live fire into it, but when you clean our weapons, you have to pull the trigger. So we always make sure it's in the chamber when we pull the trigger. And they're, they're specifically designed for test fire, and that's what they're made for. So I was real comfortable with it, as long as it's a manufactured device and not something this homemade, homemade thing. So, yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you, Chief. You guys satisfied? Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Uh, next, we have a resolution approving proposal by Automatic Systems Company of Ames, Iowa, for dissolved air flotation, DAF automatic project for the wastewater treatment plan. Hey. Um, this is not a budgeted item. I did not include in the memorandum that accompanied the resolution um, a point that uh, I should have made. In uh, the capital uh, list for 2015, we had a replacement of a Market Street lift station pump for just under $50,000. And that was during that budget year that we had determined that a higher priority was to do this upgrade for the DAF controls. And so we had talked about doing that and we intended to do that in 2015. That would have been after the budget submittal for 2016. 
And uh, we did not get it done during 2015. Uh, as a result, there was uh, just over $50,000 left in the line item in the budget for intended for the pump. We didn't buy the pump. We didn't get this project done. Uh, we found that we had some additional work to do before the controls people could come in and automate the controls, which we've finished now, and we're just coming to council now with this desire to uh, pursue finishing the project that we had intended to do in 2015. Um, this is the only uh, area in the plant from the 1982 plant upgrade that has not been updated. The controls have not been updated since uh, 1982 when the plant went online. And uh, since that time, we've also not only updated the controls, but we've also incorporated a SCADA system, uh, supervisory control and data acquisition system, automating the facility, uh, making it easier for the on-duty operator to make adjustments of the various processes from virtually anywhere in the wastewater plant, except this particular area has not been done. The controls are over 30 years old. Uh, we haven't had significant problems with them, but we felt we needed to get this upgraded before we started to experience difficulties. And so we did get the proposal, which is attached to the uh, information, and it's for the amount of uh, $47,800. It would come out of the sewer fund. Sewer fund has adequate funds on hand to cover this cost. We did not seek bids or go out for bids. Uh, we're proposing to use Automatic Systems Company, which is the control uh, uh, company that has was in at the ground level in 1982. Uh, they've been with us through the various uh, changes that we've made to the plant and the upgrades. Uh, they basically put in the SCADA system for us and incorporated everything else into integrated controls from the various points and we felt that they were uh, uniquely qualified to do this work for us. So. Questions? You guys good? Isn't it interesting the things we get to learn about sitting here? Interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And according to Don, this is the most important stuff in the city, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We all agree as long as the system works correctly. Right on, right on. <laughs> Got to have that. So. It doesn't work, then it becomes a problem. I'm, I'm satisfied. Thank you, Tom. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, next, we have a resolution of support and financial commitment for the Main Street program in the city of Burlington, Iowa. Somebody brought this forward. I have no idea who, uh, but this is a, you see here, this is a, renewal of this um, arrangement that we have with downtown partners to run the Main Street program uh, for a period of two years. Uh, it's a continuation of the agreement that's been in place for how long, Steve? 30 years. This time. 30 years. Um, if you notice in here, they have a, a requirements for maintaining a Steve's position to run the program. Um, it mentions we have a financial commitment to the program as well. Uh, we provide 10000 annually to the downtown partners. It's been $15,000 annually 15? since... Oh, you're going to have an increase? Since 2005. <laughs> okay. And that comes under, I think, in Eric's budget is where we plug that in. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. That sounds like a plug for an increase. <laughs> I've tried to decrease anytime. it, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, um, as Jim said, this is a biennial <laughs> contract between... Main Street, Iowa, downtown partners in the city. Uh, it's we've been doing it. It's been a good arrangement over the, over yeah. the years. And Steve, item five here says maintain an office in the designated boundaries. Of a, is, is, are, we're okay. We do mm -hmm. that. Yep. Yeah, River Park Place is actually the northernmost building in, in downtown. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got my question answered. I just need. Uh, have it uh, mention how much our, our support was. Yeah, because it was. doesn't say it in anywhere in the resolution or the agreement. But Yeah, yeah, the state really doesn't need to see a dollar amount there. So. Okay. Here's good. Do you know how long, you said 2005, so. The yeah, was the last time. Yeah, I think it's, I think one year for some reason it was 25,000, but it's all, otherwise it's always been 15,000. 
Okay. And that was like in 2003, I think. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. You guys Thank good? You. Good. All right. Uh, we've got some uh, public hearings set. Uh, first one is consideration of plans and specifications for the 2016 Cascade Watershed Sewer Separation Project, Phase 2. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, the, the next is uh, consideration of the budget amendment number one for 2015-16. Uh, the third is consideration of an ordinance vacating and selling a portion of Summer Street right of way located east of the property at 215 Summer Street, Burlington, Iowa. And uh, the last one is a consideration of an ordinance vacating and selling a portion of South 14th Street right of way located west of the property at 1412 Hillary Avenue, Burlington, Iowa. Okay. Uh, discussion items. Treasurer's report. So included in the packet was March's treasurer's report. Um, there's, I can point out a couple of things. You can see the downtown facade project, we're still on hold, but we have received all but about $9,500 of it as of today. So we've got another, one more owner that has to pay and that hopefully will be resolved. Um, let's see. Some of the funds that have negative balances right now or because we haven't done our second part of our transfers for this year which will happen in June. Is it the first part of June or is it the end of, the end of June? Mid-June. <laughs> yeah during the month of June we'll do one set of transfers where the scheduled for all the, the scheduled transfers will get done but we'll have a cleanup transfer that, that won't, won't happen, happen until, until like August. August. Yeah probably August because that's when we have <coughs> you know, like vehicle maintenance and things like that. That's when we have to true them up. And even the some of the property tax dollars that, that come they in. They come in later. So that's why the general fund balance looks... Well, that's because we haven't got our big tax payment yet. Okay. So yeah. that we will have, happen this month. Okay. The two big pieces are that set, the second half of the transfers and the second main bulk of the property tax revenue comes in late. The ones that, the funds that, uh, that I would note, and she was mentioning the facade, is an ongoing project that's on the negative side. Massel is a project that shows a negative balance. And I We're going to transfer from road use. That's what. Not road use. No. no. I think that comes out of the Cascade. Cash oh, yeah, balance. you're right. Yes, we're going to transfer from, because we didn't do the Cascade project. We transfer had more in there than what we need. Um, and like the other ones that we've been running deficits in, the rec bucks and all those, they're always going to be behind for a little while longer, for a few more years until we get them all caught up. Yeah. Um, and then like in capital projects, we're going to have an internal loan for that Flint Hills Manor deficit. That's going to be a TIF. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you guys looked at the revenues and expenditures and had any questions. Good. Good. A fantastic job. Man. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Annette. Okay. Uh, next, we have a proposal, development of depot restaurant. Mr. Murray. Matthew Burry, 2050 Highland Avenue here in Burlington. They may bring some handouts up to council. Please. I brought visuals. <laughs> All right. There's two of them here. It's a little oversized. But... The picture of council, which you may have already seen or maybe haven't, 
was of Greer's Restaurant when it was open in the 1940s. And this uh, is the vision that we have for restoring Greer's back to its original look and to its original glory. What I have passed out to you there is just an excerpt from uh, our comprehensive business plan. Uh, before I actually get started, though, it was, it was almost sort of ironic coming down here to council. I had the radio on, and uh, the song from the Beatles, The Long and Winding Road, was on. <laughs> and it was almost poetic that when you begin to get into a business concept, it is a long and winding road, to say the least. Anyways, our vision for Greer's, if you don't mind, I'll just go ahead and read it here. Uh, Greer's restaurant will be renovated back into its original 1944 concept. Since the former Burlington CB&Q Depot is listed on the National Historic Register, our goal is to recapture the look, feel, and ambience of the World War II era diner. Using original 1943 architectural blueprints from Holbard and Root, the long counter with the horseshoe end will be reconstructed to exact historical specifications using black granite, laminate, wood walnut trim accents, and glass. 17 squared base counter stools with green seats and backs will be installed in the exact location of the originals. A service counter with reach and high efficiency coolers and freezers will be added opposite of the main cooler, or the main counter, excuse me. To accommodate the new fire and safety codes, a sprinkler system will be added. A drop ceiling with grid pattern will seamlessly mask the system. Current water damage light fixtures that were probably added in the 1950s or 60s will be removed in the original white cake saver globe lights. Correct mounting pattern will be installed. Once again, as you saw in the picture, especially with the ladies uh, with the uh, waitress outfits. The black walls and terrestrial floor will be professionally clean, tuck pointed and sealed to a spectacular shine. Period style tables and chairs will replace the banquette booth around the north window pavilion portion of the diner. Using this style of seating, it will create occupancy now for 47 customers. Light yellow curtains, this of course apparently is matching the color of the great room curtains, will gracefully adorn the windows. To preserve the 1940 style atmosphere, waitresses and waitresses wear the 40 style uniforms. I did ask uh, not only people that I know, but I actually did a short survey on Facebook on this issue and resoundingly, a lot of the people who responded back, namely women, of course, are very excited about the prospect of actually being able to go back in time and wear an elegant uniform. So you're trying to say the guys don't like going back in time, man? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Mayor, if you want to put on a dress and go down to work, <laughs> I'm sure we can. You know, that might not be very pretty. I'll let you <laughs> no. finish up. Um, since television was not a part of the 1940s dining experience, TVs will be omitted, but music will be played, but there, will, of course, will be Wi-Fi for our guests. Something different, though, that the original concept did not have is that we will offer outdoor seasonal seating around the north portion of the pavilion. The sidewalk will replace and widen to accommodate six round four table tops with umbrellas. Outdoor dinos will get an unparalleled view, unparalleled view of the sprawling depot ground, CB and Q Baldwin locomotive, historic downtown Burlington skyline, Great River Bridge, and a bird's eye view for the, for the train watching enthusiasts. I include our mission statement down here for our business, re recognizing a diversity of customers' tastes and nutritional needs. Our meals will be carefully prepared using only quality, preferably local ingredients, to ensure that each customer receives prompt, friendly, and courteous service, to thank each guest for the opportunity to serve them, to maintain a clean, comfortable, and well-maintained premise for our customers and staff. By maintaining these objections, we shall be assured of the fair profit that allow us to contribute to the community we serve. Just made a short list of things why we sort of feel uh, that Burlington needs Greer's. Of course, you know, the 1940s unique dining experience. Greer's will, of course, be opening evening hours, satisfying professional work in downtown uh, residence. This is something we heard very clearly uh, that is, you know, widely not present in downtown, and we want to offer that opportunity for them. Greer's will offer a traditional menu while supporting health conscious trends. That's a nod to my wife, who's a dietitian. <laughs> Uh, Grills will employ about 10 to 15 employees. Uh, renovation and occupation of a vital historic downtown building. 
support Friends of the Depot's ongoing efforts to encourage investment and development of southern main floor and upper story portion of the Burlington Railroad Depot. Encourage Amtrak investment, agent in the Burlington Railroad Depot. Encourage investment, development, and growth of the South, Me South Main Street corridor, generating business for other downtown merchants and professional services. Continuation of making Burlington its downtown area a historic tourist destination and added tax revenue for the city of Burlington and Des Moines County. I just included on here the capital construction cost. You can see some of it a little bit as a work in project. I will let you sort of go ahead and visit that on your own. I'm going to make reference to it in some of my other uh, points that I'd like to sort of discuss with you. Um, our approach to the Greer's project is do, the, do this right. This has been our whole motivation from day one. We want the project, the business, and our partnership with the city of Burlington to be successful. We have been working on this concept for over a year and a half, so when I mention a long and winding road, it definitely seems to be that way. <laughs> Uh, we have done our due diligence to see if this project is not only doable, but is it profitable. We have continued to walk the long and winding road, as I have mentioned, to bring this project into reality. Some things now that we have done up until this point to get me to this place to be able to visit with you today. We have met with Klinger Associates, and we have discussed plans with them. They have been gracious enough to let us look at the PDF files on the original blueprints then from uh, from Greer's and the Burlington Railroad Depot. This, of course, has allowed us, you know, great luxury to be able to make our restoration as historically accurate as we possibly can. Uh, we have talked to Cindy Larson at Klinger's to explore federal and state historical grants, as well as Mr. Freebert uh, sitting in the back. Uh, met with, uh, yeah, I'm trying to read my own writing, which is sort of a, like reading hieroglyphics. Uh, we have met uh, with the project and has been endorsed by uh, Friends of the Depot. So we have met with them many times and of course they are excited and there's representatives from Friends of the Depot here today and thank you for coming. Uh, we have developed a business plan and this is just a portion of it. In that business plan we have embarked on a uh, com comprehensive market study, profit and loss, break even points, Our profit and loss numbers reviewed have been reviewed by bankers, business owners, and the SBA. I am proud to say that all these numbers have come back from these entities looking realistic and solid. We have been using conservative numbers and conservative estimates, but they have all continued then to prove due diligence. Uh, we have met with contractors to come up with general construction costs and rehabilitation. We've been very sensitive to being historically accurate and recreating the 1944 look. We have developed soft cost estimates from cost of payroll times three, tables and chairs, supplies, utilities, inventory, in order to serve our first customer. You don't really begin to realize how much inventory and things that you have to consider when you're looking at a restaurant all the way down, salt and pepper shakers and knives and forks and breakage and everything else. But we feel like we got a pretty good handle on how much that's going to cost. To help us establish our inventory, Costs, we have created a tentative menu that will serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Greer's. We have also developed a tentative staff schedule and hours of operation. We have met with city officials three times in an effort to begin to establish a parameter for a lease. We have three committed investors with two more strong community investors to meet with, hopefully coming up in the next week or two. Uh, a bank is currently examining our profit and loss break, min, uh, break statement and break even statements as we speak right now. I tried calling him, but I could not reach him today. Uh, this, is, of course, is once again to see, you know, once again how profitable the bank is think it's going to be, and at the same time, any uh, hopefully advice that they may give us to make those numbers even sing a little bit better. We have detained legal counsel to register trademark for the business name federal and state tax ID numbers, and establish then all the things that need to go into creating then Greer's as an LLC. Council, definitely we have moved down the process quite a bit. We are not at the beginning. We are not at the end, but somewhere in the middle. We have crossed the Rubicon, and we are committed to reopening Greer's at the Burlington Railroad Depot. In order to put all this together, I'd like to have the council Consider and grant us a first right to develop contract for Greer's. 
We would like to have uh, from May 1st to October 1st to work through and finalize remaining re aspects of this project. We are hoping to have this done, of course, sooner than later. But you never know what might happen in between now and then. And of course, you know, some of the ongoing work right now that is going on with the great room uh, needs to be timed. And so we want to make sure that our work is not impeding on their work, but yet actually trying to be, you know, cooperative with what's going on down there now. We would also like council to consider a lease arrangement that reflects and encourages private investment into the city owned property. We will soon, of course, be presenting then uh, the staff with our, our lease proposal, including boilerplate uh, proposals that we do believe are important. And so, Council, I'd like to thank you very much for this opportunity to meet with you this afternoon and to give us our vision of Greer's Restaurant. I would like to thank Jim and his staff up to this point has been outstanding to work with from members of the city coming down and unlocking the building sometimes on a moment's notice so we can have someone take a look at it. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. And I'll answer any questions that you may have. Uh, could you elaborate on that lease agreement? I think I missed something. On the lease agreement? Yeah. Well, we are hoping at this particular point, since we are investing, you know, a sizable amount of uh, private dollars in it, that, that as I mentioned, it will, it will the, the lease and or the agreement of the lease will reflect then an encouragement to allow the investment. You know, the actual details of that is something that we need to still work out. Uh, but one of the things, though, that we would like to see happen, though, is the ability for us to recoup then our costs. I mean, when you're looking close to a quarter of a million dollars to open the doors to this business, you know, investing private money into a public facility, you know, like any business, you want to try to ensure its best possibility to success. And so we certainly hope then that we can reach an agreement with the city then to accomplish those goals. We have worked a little a little bit with trying to come up with what are some common area costs, what are some just basic cost to, to have that area developed? What, it, what, was, what do we need to have for, uh, in an ideal world, uh, what would be a going rate for the space itself then plus the lease cost for uh, having access to the common areas and maintaining uh, the restrooms, et cetera, in, in, in the great room? Um, just to get an idea of where under if we had a, a facility white boxed, meaning we had a, a good space uh, set up that they would then finish off, what would you see for uh, typical lease terms? Well, we're not asking for typical lease terms. We've kind of talked with, with them. Uh, we don't have the funds to, to bring that facility up to uh, what would be considered traditional white box standards. We're, we've, we're already investing a lot of capital into getting the the great room uh, improved, getting the roof fixed, et cetera, uh, through the, the current <coughs> grant. Um, we don't have additional capital set aside to do additional improvements. That being in mind, if they had the ability to look at finishing off that space, uh, we would, we've talked with them about the idea that we would give them favorable lease terms. Well, what do those mean? Well, we don't know. Uh, we don't know what the costs are that they'd have to do to take on to do some additional improvements beyond um, just the, the finishing off of the space. How much work are they going to have to do on our behalf? Uh, when we have that, we can kind of look at what are some different factors based off of length of time, uh, an extended lease term to, to figure out, figure out what, how to give them credit for um, their capital improvements on our behalf. Is it trying to figure out, are we doing, you know, for example, is it a thousand dollar a month credit that we're giving for five years? Is it 500 for 10 years? We just haven't figured that out. And until we know what the dollar amount is that they're having to capitalize, that should really be our, technically, the building owner's um, responsibility. What are we trying to cover? Uh, but those are details that we're, we're still trying to work on as we move forward. And, they're getting some of the final cost estimates is really kind of necessary before we know what those terms should look like. Yeah, in that packet, uh, Mr. Fresnel, that I did uh, include, like I said, the construction costs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And, you know, the, the costs that were, were there were, you know, under the graces of contractors coming down and giving us what they would consider maybe a high-end bid because there were certain things, for instance, like plumbing. You know, at the time there was water under there and no one had the ability to get down there. And same with electrical. So they were looking at worst case scenario uh, if they got down there to see what happens. Uh, you'll see, of course, in there, there's a few areas in there that say, you know, a general contractor. Um, we have met with the general contractor on the great room and just had a tentative conversation with them, but nothing specific as of yet. So there are certain things in there that need to be penciled in, but we still feel comfortable that, you know, the actual rehab cost of Greer's space uh, in terms of actual, that would be physical city property, you know, would anywhere between 150 to possibly 175,000 on the high side. Uh, to do all that and you know the general contractor somewhat concurred but you know once again those are going to be hopefully high-end costs and those costs then once uh, we contract with them and then sublet bids and on that would hopefully then you know improve you know considering there might be some shared work that's going on there right now that you know will not only benefit you know the whole depot project but right. benefit our project and its cost as well right. Right. So part of this lease agreement would have to be um Five years down the road, you decide it's not working. What happens to all these improvements that they resort to yeah. the citizens of Burlington? Yeah, that's that's quite a commitment. So yeah. Yeah. we feel the project's worth it. Yeah. We feel our community's worth it. You know, and this is why we're you know looking at this particular project in particular because uh, you know the depot project to me uh, is the next logical renovation step, you know, that's been going on in downtown Burlington. I mean, the Capitol Theater was, was outstanding. Uh, this needs to be next. And we're just excited to be a part of it and looking forward to working with council and staff, you know, to bring this to reality. So, <clears throat> the only other thing, I guess, that, that is coming up is the, uh, the first rights May, May 1st to <coughs> August. What's, so what's the deal on that? Essentially, um, what's being asked for is, is that if we're, we're agreeing, we'd be agreeing not to allow another developer to come in and we wouldn't consider an offer from another developer in the meantime for that space. Um, that to me isn't it doesn't do us any harm. We haven't had a bunch of developers <laughs> knocking down our door trying to get this done. Are you saying we're insane? <laughs> <laughs> and really, there, there aren't going to be too many opportunities to have this occur. Um, having someone who has a strong vision is going to be required to have something occur here because I don't want to put us into a position where we're uh, out additional finan financially to make it happen. I mean, there may be a spot where the council wants to do that, but we're not in a position where that's part of our CIP. That's not part of what's been expressed to try to get accomplished um, as as a priority project. There may be a spot in the future where you would would change and and want to have that happen. And um, we'll we'll that's up to you as a group to if that becomes a different vision for what you want to see happen within the community. It, it changes the dynamics, but at at this point. We don't have funds that we can commit to doing this, and you know it's hard for them as a developer because they're being then asked to to take the risk on some up capital upfront capital costs on the the facility itself. We're, we can talk about giving them favorable lease terms, but we don't want to back the debt at the same time. Right. So it, it's it's a stretch. Okay. So, but. Regardless, I would say from, I would think that it, it makes sense if you, had, if you think this looks like a good project to give them that kind of right through, through October 1st to, to be the, the, the entity that we're working with to, to see about getting that development to occur. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with that, provided you, if you changed your mind, you let us know right away that, <laughs> so that no one knew that we were, uh, that there was a, uh, if someone else stepped forward, uh, that uh, we can let them know they can move ahead right away if, if your plans changed or fell apart, whatever. Oh, and, you know, and Mr. Scott, we definitely would. I just sort of said right now, though, by coming to talk to you today, it's like we've walked up the ladder to the high dive. Mm -hmm. We've walked out on the board. 
and by now coming here publicly speaking about this, we've jumped off. <laughs> We're just hoping there's a lot of water under there when we hit, so. <laughs> I like the idea, that's for sure. I think it'll be really neat if, it, if it's able to come to life. So, so obviously we don't, then nobody has a problem then with the, uh, because the, the first, that's, uh, that's gonna be on Sunday. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking in regards to the next meeting, but uh, okay. You're, I don't know if, that if it's the May first, if it's a Sunday, Reverend. Then maybe I don't. You can pray for us on that day. <laughs> so I most certainly will. I don't know that you need a formal arrangement. Um, just that you would express that you're not going to be encouraging offers from other entities between now and October one. Um, or was it? I thought I, I between May August. one and October. It's October. It, I, I really I wrote down May 1st, October 1st. Um, and the other part of it, you know, the I can't remember what we shot to you that we kind of worked. Steve put a lot of time into working on what would what it would take to uh, what would be a, a, a good uh, lease arrangement based off of this comparable spaces, the amount of space that's there, what the um, maintenance of the common space would be. Um, we've we've gotten that to the to you to take a look at, but then what are we? What would we look at for uh, making uh, offsets to that based off of the capital that you'd be fronting? We haven't had those discussions, but that's something that we'd if we could come to some sort of an arrangement that that looked favorable to all parties, we'd bring that forward to the council to to consider and it would be something where we'd be offsetting uh, lease payments be reflective to the capital investment they're doing on the property. As long as that makes sense to y'all. Yeah, makes sense to me. Matt, you, uh, is there a way to separate, or how do you uh, separate the great room from your, from Greer's? Is there a security door or a wall of some kind or how does that work? Uh, I mean, there is like, interior doors, you know, from the space. So, I mean, actually, Greer's was, you know, really set up to be self-contained within its own. Yeah, see, that was my question. Okay, you know. the other point, uh, maybe you can answer this. Uh, you, you said you hope there's a lot of water under there, but is there still water under there? Uh, you, there is <laughs> yeah, I was referring to the depot, just <laughs> There metaphor. is water in the, in the basement, actually. That's something that is different from what I think you're probably concerned about. But, yes, yeah, I, I understand um, that, but... I, you know, one of the things that we've been dealing with has been uh, this, the stormwater that leaves that facility and crosses over to the, to the river. Uh, that line has not been functioning appropriately and we've worked with public, public works has worked with BNSF. Um, I think the engineering department has come up with a tentative solution for how to address the water issues there. Uh, it will not be a cheap one. It'll be, uh, I think that, I don't know if we had a neighborhood cost on that. 150. 150. Um, that we'd agreed to take care of. But that would address all, the, it would be running a, a new uh, stormwater line. It would take the stormwater from there uh, to the north. Uh, we have another spot that the water crosses up uh, in a, neighborhood of Main Street, um, immediately north of there, uh, tying into that crossing and, and using that one. And it solves, an, one of the issues it solves is it, ta it, it eliminates one crossing point of the BNSF. And I think there's a lot of value. It's not functioning anyway. We can't find where it crosses. Uh, we've had a lot of dis difficulties trying to figure that out. Um, one of the things that we talked with uh, for with with BNSF in regards to this, um, we feel that there's probably a level of responsibility they have for it not functioning appropriately. Now, we also talked about um, talk on it. What's the angular arch sewer? Uh, the repair that they did down there on on that sewer. Um, we talked about doing a, an offset with those two separate projects uh, where we took care of 
dealing with this project, they took responsibility for the angular arch sewer. Um, we feel that there's probably some level of benefit to both of us to have an, a cost share between the two. Uh, their project on the angular arch sewer was in the 120 range. Is that right? They claim 160, I think. They claim 160. I've heard a couple different numbers. I think that includes all our extra work they've been doing checking it out first. Yeah, the, the, the physical costs that we'd, we'd heard was the 120. I know they have a lot of extra costs that were associated that from their personnel trying to deal with the issue, which I think they've included when they're saying the 160. But regardless, there's been a lot of cost both for both parties to deal with uh, stormwater in that area. And we'll, we'll be covering that out of our miscellaneous sewer rehab project. I'm out. Um, and that also incorporates one of the things that we've talked about, and they wanted to make sure that we got addressed. Um, if and when Amtrak ever gets to where they do improvements on the east side to their facility, uh, making sure that the stormwater coming off, the, the drains coming off of the, their covers of out there uh, have a spot where that water can go to, and that would be flowing through this new, new line. Okay. I know that was an awful long answer to your question of water underneath their building, but. But it's okay, because people need to understand that. We do have a temporary sump that is working. For those that, that are at home, um, with the repairs that are being done, if people have been down to the depot, there is a, a line across the parking lot there, and that has to do with the temporary pumping that's going on to make the, to allow for the repair work to be done. We're good. Good. I wish you well, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much for the opportunity. Yeah. And then Mr. Fernow, if it's all right, I can go ahead and I'll leave those pictures there, so after the meeting, if members of the audience want to take a sure. look at them. It'd be okay to come up here tomorrow then and pick them up? Yes, it certainly would. All right, thank you very and we, much. They're just not designed in a, a format that <laughs> makes for display over the overhead or yeah. online, so. Yeah. Nice old pics, though, man. Brings back memories back when I used to uh, not be. Anyways, <clears throat> next we've got uh, Vineyard Street. <clears throat> here discussing uh, the drainage situation in the area of Vineyard uh, and about a half block between Vineyard and Kirkwood. Um, this is a continuation of that. Uh, in the budget we've proposed a project that would address reditching, uh, kind of the area highlighted in red here. Uh, it was an assumed area based on just kind of the terrain out there visually driving. Uh, no topographic survey's been done, no design work's been done to kind of nail down those costs. So there might have been a little bit of sticker shock with that, and that's for good reason. Uh, it's a fairly large project, but not, um, hopefully costs would be fairly below that. It's, the costs are more con conceptual level, so hopefully design plus 30%, something like that. So when you run into other problems, you've got the money there already instead of going back going, uh-oh. So, okay, this is our area in question. Like I said, it's uh, about a half block north of Kirkwood, uh, Vineyard and the side streets there. Let's see, there have been numerous complaints through the year. it's a, years. It's a very flat area of town. Uh, ditches that are there filled in over time due to lack of maintenance. Um, last year we received particular complaints and a petition wanting to address an open storm pipe near 2216 Vineyard, uh, the ditch depth and uh, driveway culvert complaints. Um, like I said, 2216 Vineyard uh, has complained to the Public Works a uh, number of times 
over a number of years, a number of different staff members uh, about the ditch situation out there and culverts. Um, and then also he's expressed interest in having the city extend the storm sewer and fill in the ditch in front of his property. Uh, there was also a petition from the residents, as I said, in 2015 to improve the drainage in this area. Uh, at that time, the concerns voiced by the residents were safety of an open pipe, which we have addressed. Um, there was a set of crossbars installed to help prevent access. Small pipe, probably not a big concern, but this takes another step to prevent entry by uh, small people, uh, kids outside. Uh, depth of the I like ditch. how you said that. <laughs> Entry by small people. Well, little people. <laughs> Sorry, just all right. Go I'm ahead. A little tight at home that crawls. Uh, Were you talking not... about me? <laughs> <laughs> I am afraid you're not that small. <laughs> uh, the depth of the ditch near Vineyard and Shields. Uh, that pipe was in between 2216 and I don't know the neighbor's address. Theoretically, it'd be 2218, I guess. Um, don't know if that's the point. Well, the, I think they skipped there. I think it goes to 20. Okay. I'd say strange things like that happen in town. 2216 and 2220. Um, there's that in that outlet pipe, I guess. Um, the road ditch there's deeper in that area. Uh, for the situation, it's not it's not a big safety concern, but it is closer to the road than I, is ideal for the depth of the ditch. Um, and as such, uh, we addressed it by installing edge of road markers so that uh, particularly during like snow events when the ditch is full, uh, that people aren't aware that that's where the ditch is. Uh, now they know that that's the edge of the road. And then the condition of the ditches, uh, they're shallow, they don't drain well. Um, can't see this very well, but this is the open storm pipe before. Uh, you can see that it just had an opening, this is the location. And you can't see it very well, but there is a vertical and a horizontal bar across the end of that now. Uh, it's a 15 inch uh, reinforced concrete pipe that by the time you break that down, that's approximately a seven by seven square. Uh, nobody's fitting through that. Uh, the ditch depth that Vineyard and Shields, like I said, the depth's not ideal, but it's acceptable uh, for its location to the road. Uh, and then we did install delineators to improve the safety. And forgive me, I, I know we've been through most of this in the past. Uh, Councilwoman Wilson wasn't here at the time. Uh, if there's something you would like me to skip through, just let me know. If you have questions as we go, let me know. Uh, the conditions in the ditches, uh, the neighborhood's flat. Uh, due to the terrain, the ditches were probably not substantial to begin with. Um, uh, they haven't been maintained for a number of years. Uh, staffing and funding was limited and maintenance was cut. Uh, and that was somewhere around 20, 30 years ago. I mean, and so the ditches have actually held up fairly well over time with the minimal to no maintenance that they've received. Um, culverts under driveways have not been maintained by city, uh, by property owners, which is required in city code. Uh, you can see out there that most of the culverts are half full or completely buried. Um, and then parking in the ditches has made things worse. Uh, it's seal coat streets, so there's not a curb. Uh, people are able to just pull off the edge of the road and the ditches are right next to the road. So end up getting ruts over time, creates obstructions in the ditch. Uh, here's some pictures of the ditch conditions. Uh, Hayes Court, or not Court, uh, but Hayes you can see uh, is basically non-existent on both sides of the road. And we have other places in town where it's a similar situation where the ditches are basically non-existent, but the neighborhoods aren't flat. So the water continues to drain. Um, Kenilworth, Kenilworth, rather, it's mostly the same situation, better condition on the west side. Uh, this is the east side of the road. There's, you can still see that there was at least one point in time a ditch there. <laughs> Uh, shields, same situation. You can see remnants of ditches, but nothing substantial. Uh, this is a section of city code indicating that driveway culverts are to be maintained by property owners uh, that that driveway serves. Uh, and then kind of the reality of the situation as discussed last year is the ditches are beyond maintenance. Uh, it's a matter where a project is going to have to occur, whether it's done by city forces or by uh, city contract 
that reestablishes those ditches if anything's going to be done to the ditches. Um, and if that occurs, there are a uh, few trees in the right of way that are going to need to be removed. Uh, some of these trees are substantial, and you'll be likely to hear uh, concerns from residents in the neighborhood, and they'd be understandable concerns. Uh, if it's a, done as a project in house, we'll design the ditches to try and preserve as many trees as possible, but the goal of the project would be to actually improve the drainage there. Um, if I know at least on, I believe it's Shields, there's a catapa tree that is right smack dab in the middle of the ditch. The property owner would be thrilled to have that thing go away also. So it'd be a benefit to everybody. Um, and then the drainage will improve, uh, but due to the terrain uh, and the existing shallow outlet, um, the improvement could be limited. Uh, like I said, we haven't done a survey yet there to determine what the improvement could be um, until we knew that we, there was a project to proceed with. Uh, we don't do the preliminary uh, design work. See, that's where I'm, that's where I have a little problem is, you know, how, how much of an improvement, you know, it says it could be limited. Well, how limited? Because uh, our, our finances is kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've, I mean, I've been with the city for eight years. This was developed back in the 30s, I believe it was. Um, 30s to 50s time range. I don't know what those ditches looked like years ago. Um, but I know that the situation there doesn't see the recurring flooding that we see now. Um, I didn't get the pictures from Steve to put in here, but we've received photos of just the streets completely underwater. Uh, I'm guessing you guys have seen them too. In particular, the uh, south, it'd be the southwest side of Shields, well, near that outlet where it fills, backs up, and then it just flows over the street to that outlet. Um, so far, to my knowledge, there hasn't been actual flooding of homes in the neighborhood, but due to the terrain and the continued uh, degradation of the ditches, that could be a potential in the future. Um, that I know that it's costly, the project, and that the improvement may not be your ideal situation. We might not be able to handle that 100-year storm or something like that, but these regular flooding events won't be occurring. Um, Will it be perfect? No. Would there be an improvement? Yes. Uh, and like I said, without proceeding with design, I can't tell you how deep those ditches we can actually make, what the improvements actually are going to be. Um, that's one thing that we could proceed with. Uh, and like I said, the project's been budgeted. We could proceed with design. Um, and that could be implemented over time. Uh, the project, if you didn't want to expend the entire amount this year, we could stage it through few small projects, ultimately you're going to see the overall cost of the project be more if we were to let the contract. Is, um, is there a way that we could, because I would definitely be up for that, of looking at the worst area, looking at the worst spot over there and, and doing an area to see, well, I don't know, but that, that's just a thought, just to see how much of a how much of a difference but I mean I guess I understand where you're coming from and actually yeah, I know I just heard myself say it. well <laughs> it's a reasonable question to ask uh, the problem with addressing the worst spot is water flows downhill so you have to m make sure that water can get there so you work from the outlet up so um, and then the reality of the situation continued sorry uh, with the project culverts would have to be replaced and the driveways over the top of those uh, by city code, culverts are the responsibility of the property owner. Uh, we would be pursuing assessment, unless the council desired otherwise, of property owners for the replacement of those culverts. Uh, through the budget that was proposed, we were doing a cost share, uh, where the city would cover approximately 50% of that cost, and, well, exactly 50%, uh, and the homeowners would cover the other half of the culverts. Uh, and then, depending on how the design goes, we do have wide right-of-way there, so we could push the ditches a little bit further away from the road towards homes. Uh, there will be some benefits, some detriment to that. People perceive less uh, front yard, but they would be able to maintain a little bit of on-street parking. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, parking would have to be prohibited to maintain ditches over time. And then here's the concept cost estimate. Uh, total project without engineering was estimated to be about 251,000. Um, in red here is highlighted the private culverts and the driveway replacement. Uh, that total is about $86,000. Um, and so either 86,000 of that could go to property owners as per city code, or we could do, like I said, cost share with them, 50% which brings that total cost of the project down some. Uh, the estimate was based on, I believe it's actually two and a half feet, not three foot deep ditch along both sides of vineyard and the north half of each street towards vineyard. Um, actual project limits would be determined based on uh, what our survey finds. Um, I believe that our project area actually goes, a, our concept area goes a little bit, bit further west than is necessary. Uh, so we'd see some savings there too. Um, How many of these neighborhoods do we have that resembles this one in Burlington? Hopefully getting there. Eric, can you advance me? Yeah, it's not responsive. Okay. Okay, well. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not if, working the remote. That's all I can say. say if no one cares for the people at home to see a visual, we can proceed with that answer. Because that's actually the very next slide. Is it? <laughs> there we go. Okay, this is not exhaustive. <laughs> it's exhausting, but not exhaustive. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> Ah, the joys of technology. Hey, right back to it. Way to go, Eric. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is not exhaustive. There are just numerous locations in town where there is no curb and gutter. There's uh, ditches some places. Some places never had ditches. Uh, it all depends on the terrain. In particular, off the top of my head, we were able to come up with about seven total areas, including Vineyard. Uh, up by Lenox and those side streets near Hope Haven, um, Cliff and Bomberger south of uh, Sunnyside. There's a large area there. It's a steeper area. Uh, ditches there used to be there. Some are marginally there, but the streets are steep enough that drainage continues to not be a problem. There's not flooding. Uh, Lincoln area off of Osborne, uh, same situation, steeper area believe we actually have some intakes and storm sewer in that area that the ditches lead to. Um, then uh, Ridge Row and Birdie uh, down by Case Company over the bluff. Uh, Ridge Row could use some ditch improvements but it's not a flooding situation like Vineyard also. Uh, 15th Acres Denmark same situation we've got some ditches in varying condition not generally a flooding issue. Um, Jackson's got good ditches. Uh, that's between Mason and, well, I guess between Harrison's and Summer. Um, and then one on here that I know of that we won't be able to do anything with is Parkway by Crapo Park. Uh, that's an area that's just very flat. Uh, there's only a culvert that goes under the road that's, I don't know if it's three inches under Parkway. Uh, any improvement there is negligible, it's just so flat that even the outlet doesn't have a way to outlet. Um, and then, like I said, there's various others scattered throughout the city in varying conditions. Uh, talking to Chris Clements, the operations manager, I mean, the vast majority of complaints come from the vineyard area. Uh, most of the time when it's one of the other areas, it's some blockage has occurred in the ditch and it's just a matter of running out with a backhoe and removing that little bit of buildup that flow is able to continue. Um, there, most of them I'd say aren't outside of maintenance probably, where this area is just a larger scale situation. Um, like I said, vineyard, it's flat and that's where we get the majority of our complaints from. Um, other areas are generally steeper, um, deeper ditches, better condition, maintainable. 
And then it's, like I said, normally a lot of the obstructions have to do in those other areas with other people either parking in the ditch or occasionally people putting gravel towards a driveway in the ditch, which we order removed. Another, it was brought to my attention to entertain uh, consideration of extending that 12 in, or that outlet pipe, create a structure and uh, fill in the ditch in front of 2216. Uh, I was told that I should propose that. Um, in order to do that, we'd install a structure. At the end of that pipe, we'd have three pipes that go out crossing uh, the culvert, we'd be replacing the culvert. Uh, 2220, uh, 2216, and then a culvert under uh, vineyard. Uh, the estimated cost of that with, was about $26,000, a little over, including uh, engineering. Um, that's no improvements to the remaining drainage area as was petitioned by the neighborhood. Um, concept estimate here showing those numbers. That's going to be more just because it's a lower number. Um, the concerns with that proposal are it's an infrastructure improvement without assessment to the adjacent property owners. Uh, historically, uh, whenever improvements have been made in the right of way to city infrastructure at the request of uh, property owners, it's been assessed, the improvements have been. Uh, that's not what was being entertained at this point. Uh, it only benefits one property owner. Uh, it doesn't do anything to improve the, air, the neighborhood. All it does is fill in uh, front yard. Uh, it actually creates some more potential problems there with flooding because that ditch that is there is storage capacity during rain events. Uh, right now culverts don't necessarily function the way they should because they haven't been maintained and the ditches don't, but water still gets to that outlet um, and it can flow overland into that ditch and so that provides some detention capacity there. Uh, that would go away if that gets filled in. Um, any obstructions on those pipes now leading wouldn't be able to flow overland into that outlet. It would be just flooding the neighborhood. Um, and then like I said, it does nothing to improve the area ditches as petitioned by residents. Um, due to the concerns, engineering at least can't recommend that we do that localized improvement. Um, our recommendation is to address the area ditches um, and if they pop up some of those other areas in town it doesn't have to be addressed immediately uh, these problems didn't show up overnight I don't think anyone expects them to be resolved overnight um, can do a stage program uh, work can be done through a contracted project or through public works crews um, engineering it still design it out and we could do the staking for, to have Chris's crews um, sometimes create, I don't know, one block a ditch at a time type of thing. Do an improvement over time. Um, and then the other options, continue to do nothing. Um, it's not really preferred, but it's been done for 20 or 30 years. Uh, but the fact is that things will continue to get worse. Uh, as those sediment in more and more, um, the potential for flooding goes up and potential damage to area residents' homes. Uh, any questions from council and more specifically for me, uh, my understanding is there's hesitation on council, but how would you like me to proceed? What's the feasibility of Chris's crew doing, a, doing the project over a period of years? What's the feasibility? Yeah. Would you, like to come, would you like to come up and answer that? Sorry, Chris. That's why you're here. Um, we're quite capable of doing the work. We have the equipment to do it. It's just a matter of a lot in the time to do it. I mean, we'd have to, something would have to not get done, or we'd have to rearrange priorities to do it. But I mean, we're quite capable of doing the work if it's laid out and engineered for us. Okay. Your concern would be that it would potentially cost a little more, but it would be our our crew that was doing it. Uh, the increased cost would be, I mean, with Chris's crews, it's always an opportunity cost situation. <coughs> it's they're working here instead of working on some other project, uh, patching, 
uh, joint ceiling, things like that. Uh, that increased cost is more of a concern of if we were to let the project uh, in phases, there's always cost savings when a contractor is able to come in and do a larger project, uh, smaller project, smaller, uh, that mobilization they keep having to come every year. Uh, you've got that increased cost just from them having to show up um, and handle with smaller quantities. But as far as Chris's crews go, that's purely opportunity cost of them being out there instead of doing what <coughs> other things they could or should be doing. My, uh, my hesitation is, uh, one, that's a whole lot of money that, you know, if we had, if we were rolling in money, you know, I mean, I, I, I totally understand where they're coming from, but that, that's a whole lot of money uh, for limited help, and this is just the way I see it, that that opens up the door for all those other, that they're not complaining now, but my experience is, Maybe some people might not complain until the guy gets a new pair of shoes, and then everybody wants a new pair of shoes. And you know, I want to try to be fair. That's that's why I run mm -hmm. for council. I, you know, I want every everything fair for everybody. Well, how do you do? How do you do fair for everybody when when just that area over there is going to be limited help and it's costing a quarter of a million dollars? I I don't know. I don't know. And I can't say that <clears throat> your concerns aren't unfounded. Um, I, I guess the way to answer that, Mayor, is that everybody else in town except for those areas have curbs and gutters and storm sewers and a way for the water to get away from their uh, uh, properties. I, th I think that uh, it, we've got to look at the other things. The advantage of getting, getting rid of the water is not about it being a nuisance. It's about what it does to the, our sewer system. With The longer water sits on the ground, the better the opportunity for it to get into our, our uh, sanitary system uh, through infiltration. The, uh, the longer the water sits there, the more damage it does to the rest of our infrastructure, our streets and, and uh, alleys and, and sewers. The, the longer that that water sits there, the more damage it does to the, to the rest of the infrastructure around. Everybody in town is paying stormwater utility fees. And we just increase those fees, but we're not providing any kind of stormwater uh, maintenance for that particular neighborhood and it's it's not something that the neighborhood's done it's it's something that the city has felt to do over the years and the, the maintenance program that went away before was something that was done on a continual basis I, it doesn't really need to be done on a continual basis it's you go in there you take care of the of the thing and then you go back two or three years later and you kind of dress it up a little bit um, and uh, so that it continues to work. And it's the same thing you would do that you do for storm sewers and, and gutters and the like. My neighborhood was one of those that was pictured up there. My block doesn't have that issue anymore. I, what, what my block had was right in front of my house, there was water even in the driest part of summer because it was the lowest part was right in front of my house. They quit taking care of that, uh, of the, of the uh, ditches, so that water had no way of, of getting out of there. So it was constantly, I was having to step over water. What our neighborhood did was petition to have the street reconstructed, and we put in curbs and gutters and storm sewers. And it was back when we had, uh, when the city had that program where neighbors paid 25%, neighborhood paid 25%, and the city paid 75%. I know that's not what we're looking at now, but it's just an example of of, uh, uh, of the extremes some neighborhoods would go to to get rid of that of that water issue. And we're in the big picture. We're not talking that much money. We're talking about a fairly sizable neighborhood getting rid of a very substantial problem. And and there and, and for me there would be a cost share involved because. They, some of those culverts are going to have to be replaced. Some of them can be cleaned out, but some of those culverts are going to have to be replaced and, and, uh, and some of the drives are going to have to be taken care of. And, and, uh, and I don't have a problem with cost share. I said we pay 25% of our cost of a new street and, and uh, sewers in our neighborhood. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I think it's important to get rid of the water not only from it being just a nuisance, but also from the damage it does to the rest of the, our infrastructure. 
That was one of the ones that raised a concern about spending that much money in a, in a limited neighborhood. Uh, my issue would be I can't see the value of doing it in stages. If you're going to do it, I think you just ought to do it and, and get it done. And um, I, I th That's just my perspective. I, I don't see how stages works. Uh, but I would say the biggest value in doing it in stages would be if Chris's crews were to address it. Um, I think if we are doing it as a let project, that doing it all at once would be yeah, the most beneficial that to the be, city. That would be my preference. I had the same concerns as the mayor did with uh, spending that much money in one neighborhood and you know, where we go, the next neighborhood, the next neighborhood, but um, well, I, I think <coughs> that can be swayed. Well, and we could always proceed with design. Um, that would be important. I, I would and like to see we that. can narrow down what those costs are. Um, it's one of those things that something does eventually need to happen there. Uh, whether it's now, five years from now, 10 yeah. years from now, right. something will eventually have to be done. Um, we could proceed with that design and come back with some more solid numbers and this would be a project that would be constructed in uh, calendar year 17, um, still in this fiscal year, uh, but next spring. Um, I would certainly like to see that. I can't see approving this just. I can't. Uh, the folk more or less. Uh, my thought is there's got to be other communities that have had to deal with this problem and uh, have we have we looked into that to see if there's another another possible option out there? Uh, I, I can I get a clarification on what other options you'd be looking for? I mean, oh. when you look at counties, counties have ditches all the time, and they generally don't do a tremendous amount of maintenance because p maintenance on ditches can be costly over time, to the point where it's cheaper to let it go, let it run its life cycle, and then come back and re-ditch. Um, county I used to live in was Van Buren County, uh, poor county, uh, and that's how they addressed ditches was it's not a problem until it's a problem and then they came through and fixed it. Uh, some of it was staged, some of it was they saved up over the course of three, four years and then came through and did a big project. Um, the options are basically either re-ditch or install storm sewer in the area. Um, the advantage of ditches are it does provide detention capacity, uh, so you can have a smaller outlet pipe ultimately than you would if you had to do a storm sewer. Uh, that 15 inch outlet near um, 2216 uh, would probably have to be upsized to something larger if we were to install storm sewer. Uh, storm sewer is going to be significantly more costly uh, initially, and um, over time potentially maintenance would be less. But it's going to be significantly more costly up front, and then with the streets being seal coat in the neighborhood, uh, you're still going to have some sort of ditching uh, to get the water to any intakes and storm system right. that is there. So unless we're going to go through and reconstruct all the streets through there, uh, ditching is kind of the option we're looking at, unless you want to talk really large numbers. You're just, you're just full of... Uh... Bad news, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say every, wisdom tonight. No. Say wisdom. Every time I come here, it costs money. <laughs> it's true. In the Normally, it's good things, but this is, I mean, and this will be a good thing. Ultimately, it would improve the situation in the neighborhood. It may not be perfect, but the situation would be improved. In the grand scheme of things, it's not a lot of money for dealing with a stormwater issue for a neighborhood this size. So we just got done talking about a potential $150,000 expenditure to deal with yeah, the stormwater issue down at the depot. Correct. Well, As we're, we're talking pretty heavily about spending $26.2 million on, to uh, stop the floodwaters uh, down on the riverfront. It, we've yeah, got but they're making us talk about that $26.2. <laughs> you know, I mean, it wasn't like we signed no, up. No, we can do that. the same thing that the <clears throat> last recommendation that he had, and that is to ignore that, too. And, forcing us to to uh, do that it's not like the, they're forcing us to do the, <laughs> yeah, right. do the uh, separation uh, and John, sorry. John Bowden's here from 2216 Vineyard um, would, can he say a couple of things that I didn't see John but I don't mind he's the he's the catalyst behind this deal oh, good evening um, 
Brian had a lot of good ideas, and, and I agree with a lot of the things he said. And uh, I just wanted to say that Vineyard Street, when I first moved there in 1970, was a quiet neighborhood. But the city has allowed a large commercial base at the very end of Vineyard. I mean, you have Wine Guard Factory, you got Pizzazz, you got the Casino, you got Autumn Heights, intricate builders, and a daycare center. So, because of that, there are 150,000 cars a year traveling past my house. And that's from you guys' records, 500 cars a day. So, although some people do park on the lawns all over town, a lot of this comes from damage of the storm sewers, comes from if you meet a bus, the city buses run down that street 10 times a day, even though it's not a bus route. So if you've got a bus coming down there and you've got a truck coming down there, both of them move over, it's only 18 feet wide, the street. So that means both of them, or at least one of them, is over in the lawns in the storm sewer ditches. And that happens 500 times or 200 times a day, every day. Now, the culverts that run underneath the streets on all the intersecting streets of Vineyard, and that's Hayes and Shield, not Shields, Shields is still good, Hayes and Kenilworth and a whole bunch of them down there, the ones that run underneath the street are all squashed off on the end. So absolutely no water can go underneath those. Now, at my particular place, and I've done a little elevation study, and Shield Street Alley, which is almost across the street from me, is about 12 feet higher than my next door neighbor's property. 12 inches or 12? 12 feet. That alley is really high. So you know what that means, water runs downhill. Now what's happened right now is two things. Um, there is no, the culvert that runs underneath Shields Alley is all squashed over, so no water can run there. So it all builds up right there, running off of the alley, runs across the street, and it tries to go underneath the driveway culverts into the big ditch where it should go. But since the ditches haven't been cleaned out, the culvert that runs underneath my driveway is still in good shape, but half of it is covered up with silt. So no, not much water can run. So that means the water builds up over here and runs all over my neighbor's lawn and his driveway when it rains hard. Now part of that problem is that when his house was built, and his driveway was built, was around 1950, 55. The road base was much lower then than it is now. So that building up of the road base increases that problem. Can, can you just, uh, I just need for you to just answer one question if you can. Sure. Uh, 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 during the, during the uh, uh, rainy seasons, uh, what, what percentage of the, t what percentage would you say that there's flooding uh, uh, in your, in your area, in your? Uh, well, if we, the last couple of years, of course, we've had more rain than maybe we normally have, but um, every time it rains, if you get an inch of rain, it floods. Every time. It floods across the street, <clears throat> yeah. Now, one thing I did want to mention about Ryan's thing is that uh, when he mentioned about the, the large culvert there, if they covered that all up, you know, and um, if you just covered it up and put it connected a pipe there, um, may not be such a good situation, but if you put culvert pipe that had holes in it and didn't bring the level up to the, the street, just had a little dip there, 
that water would soak down and go into these holes in this culvert and run down to the, the main culvert. If you covered that up and put a grate on top of it, then any water that flooded off the street would go down that grate down into the storm sewer, pre preventing overflow in there. Um, I like the idea of the cost sharing of if you're going to do uh, underneath the driveway. You know, I think that's a good idea, even though the city installed those as part of their storm sewer. And now they don't claim them. You know, and that gets to be kind of a problem with me. You know, when the city installs something and then says, we're not going to take care of it now. The neighborhood really needs a lot of work, and, and like the petition said last year, you know, we're really not asking for curbs and gutters and underground, a few maybe undergrounds in front of my house, but we're not asking for that. We're just asking for like a, uh, a five-year plan to come out and regrade the ditches and fix the ones that go underneath the streets that are all squashed off on the ends, or fix the ones that go underneath the alleys that are all squashed off. We gotcha. need to be directing that water to where we want it to go. Mr. Bell, I sure appreciate you. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, you coming up. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, John does bring up one interesting, or not really interesting, but one point of clarification. Uh, our intent with this isn't just ditches and addressing uh, private culverts, uh, the city's culverts under the streets would also be addressed uh, at, with the reditching and culverts under alleys. So just if there's any confusion on that, get that clarified. Any other questions you guys have for Ryan? I can't make a decision until you come back with some numbers. So okay. That's what I would suggest we authorize him to do is oh, get started on it. For the overall area. Yeah. Um, present workload will be probably get that surveyed mid summer, come back with a design hopefully by October, November. Uh, and if you guys, uh, if the council wishes at that point to proceed with the project, we'd proceed with a letting um, uh, with construction next spring. You don't have anything else going on, do you? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not busy or anything. Um, and to answer someone's question that I'm sure is thinking about it, Division Street will hopefully be paved this week. Thank you. It's looking good, <laughs> and they were You're, really jamming on that. Um, the intent is the contractor will be paving those middle two lanes uh, tomorrow and Wednesday, weather permitting. Uh, there's some manhole box outs that will have to be addressed after that, and I think we've got one ADA ramp that needs to be constructed. So hopefully end of the week, end of next week, that project should be all wrapped up. Good yeah. deal. Um, the other project I know that's on at least one council member's <laughs> mind, uh, the Cascade uh, sanitary sewer extension. Uh, things are not quite wrapping up, but we're very near connecting all the sanitary together. Uh, there will be some cleanup, and we've got at least one change order to address um, the park's office lateral. Uh, doesn't go down where everyone thought it did, um, so we need to figure out how to get it into the new sanitary sewer instead of sending that down to the river. Um, <laughs> Any other questions for council okay. since I'm up here? Thanks for covering all that, Ryan. Actually, you are you have several projects that you're working on, uh, design work on, and yeah. I don't have any clue where you're at on different pieces of it, but I know you are just started design work on Agency Street. Uh, yeah, survey's been completed. Christian has started uh, getting that topographic survey drawn up. Um, and that's on the west side. That is the west GE portion. of Highway 61 uh, between West Burlington Avenue and 61, the concrete up there. Uh, the other portion of agency will be a next year uh, situation, is my intent. Hopefully get uh, high V's project done there and the Burlington uh, crossings. crossings. I was confused in comments. Um, Burlington Crossings project done, and then we can come in and address our roadway so we're not a detriment to their construction project. Uh, positives and negatives to go on that route instead of trying to address it quicker, but at this point it'd be a construction conflict. 
Okay. Busy, busy, busy. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Public school. City manager. Mm -hmm. This is on here with nothing in the packet, nothing designed to present additional information, but you have had three different entities present ideas on options for what you could potentially do with that fac facility. Um, if I guess kind of what's the vision of the council, what's your just direction for how you, you would like to proceed? If you're looking at a housing development, um, my recommendation would be between the two that had come forward with proposals would be to work with Miller Valentine. Uh, we have spoken with them uh, about their level of interest and their potential to uh, be able to garner funding. Uh, it'd be through the same program they had applied last year with the Salter School. Uh, in discussions with them, they looked to tentatively be able to score comparable, possibly a little better depending on what arrangements they'd be able to work out with us um, on, a, on a proposal. Um, but you also have the offer for the potential to develop that for an art center, um, not as fleshed out for knowing how that would proceed financially. It's kind of up to where you all would like to see. When we took over the facility, it was with the idea for housing um, and kind of as a backstop that we look to demo that if, if nothing else came forward to be able to be done with it but what where would you like to go and what would you like to see brought forward to you for a, de a, a development agreement sure um, so I, I really like the idea of the art school but um, as far as time wise you know I'd like to see something done with that building sooner than later it's already sat empty and neglected for so long, I don't think it should sit there any longer. Um, I've had some input from some people. Um, of course, half of them want to just tear it down. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It was kind of split, but I really didn't get a lot of responses. Um, but I think housing would be the way to go. I mean, I liked his presentation, too. so. Um, I, uh, I, I've talked with a couple of people from that neighborhood, and uh, Andy Anderson's here tonight, too, and he's been the mover and shaker up there for quite some time, um, and he had indicated that uh, they would prefer to see housing projects, but he was a little, a little skeptical about the ability to uh, uh, get that done with the additional housing on the uh, edge of the property that they were talking about. Um, I, I know for me that um, uh, whoever can show me the money and can put a project together and show me the money is the one that, uh, that I, I would support, whether it's a art school or, or a housing project. I think the housing project has the greatest uh, uh, potential for success, but I also think that, uh, that um, this better should be the last shot if something doesn't develop, then we need to take the step and, and uh, get rid of that building because it's uh, it continues to uh, uh, cost us money. Otherwise, um, it's uh, I, I would I would call it the last ditch effort for me. Um, it's, we, I've sat on this for council for many many years, and it it comes up constantly that it, uh, the problems with that building and it just gets beat up more and more and more every day. If we can't get a project together, then we need to, we need to uh, take the initiative to get rid of that building, in my opinion. It could, my mind could be changed by people in that neighborhood, but that's the way I feel right now. I talked to a bunch of people in the neighborhood and it was, uh, uh, it was surprisingly unanimous that they wanted, uh, they wanted a housing units in the building I was really surprised about that. Um, I know the developers, I know that they've done this before, you know, and uh, um, they're really serious about it. And um, 
My thought is, I think this building needs to get developed so we don't have to tear it down, and I want to go with the person or the group that has the best chance of doing it. I think the developers uh, from out of town that want to make uh, housing units, I think they've got the best chance just because that's what they do. They've got the experience there, and uh, uh, for the young lady that wanted to do the art school, um, we've got some other buildings that I think would uh, could, uh, could work out for something like that. So uh, I'm going to have to say, uh, as much as I... As much as I would love to have seen something like that, I think it would be cool. Um, I think for Burlington, we're better off using that building for, for housing units. And to come down to me, I better agree with all the three of you. I haven't talked to anybody, my, my folks that I talk to, that thinks that an art project would work there because, for one, the building is way too big for, for that. Uh, I, I think that the project sounds good, but it needs a building comparable size that would work for that. And I'm in favor of uh, the, letting the developer do some housing work. If he, if he can get it done in a time frame, I want to give him a time frame, whether that's a year or whatever it is. I agree. If he can't get it done, then that building needs to go. Something's, yeah, something's got to. I think gotta. we need to have a time frame. Yeah, and speaking with Saun Saunderson Heights, Eric and I got to listen to their thoughts, and there were quite a few of them that were expressed with us, too. Um, Based off of that, if we were to, what we'd like to try to do is get, uh, the, have the developer present a proposal for the next work session. Um, we told him that we'd like to, if we can, arrange during that day when he was here to see if he would be available to some people from the neighborhood to be able to go through their ideas with them to be prior to that work session so that they could ask some questions of him and make sure that the, anything that they had got addressed. Um, so Eric, you're supposed to make sure that you get that arranged. Um, you do have the contact person for Saunders and Heights. He's on it. <laughs> He's um, on. The time frame that they'd be looking at as we asked them what they'd look at, to, um, they're, they're wanting to use the same application process they used last year. So they'd be in a, they'd like to be able to get something to the council this, this next time, be able to, it would, Anything that we would develop, if we were to move forward with it, would probably be in the form, at least within the TIF financing, even regardless of how, what was being done with TIF financing, that, that law, the TIF law allows for a development agreement on the land to be done that allows you to be a little, be a little creative with how you structure it. Um, and it would be for the period of one year. And we expressed to them that we thought that you would probably only want to see a one, one year deal because uh, if it doesn't happen in that year, I, it just seems like you want to get affirmed. It, it's going to get torn I'm hoping down. It can happen in a year. Oh, I tell you, because it, it it is deteriorating. It's still a solid structure, but it, it's it is, a, it's I mean, a detriment yeah. to the community, and it it would be nice that it needs to get done one way or another. Um, and I know that that was the ex, the additional housing that was brought up that he had proposed. I know Saunderson Heights had express some interest in seeing what that would look like. And so it, when you talk to Peter, I think that would be pretty important that he comes up with what he could see for potentially happening with that. Um, but we'll have that brought forward to you this next time. And he's gonna look, I know he's gonna look at a TIF rebate that he's gonna wanna see, but he's also talking about cash up front that he would pay for the structure within that, uh, within the clause of being able to get funding from the whatever that source was, if you remember, the LIHTC, the, the low yeah. income housing tax credit. Okay. Which their applications in December again, so and, and then find out in March. And I know he's been; they've been fairly forthcoming with as they develop a proposal. They giving money up front; they're willing to do. Uh, as an off, but as an offset, they are going to want a more aggressive TIF rebate, and it's more about for them to make something successful. It's about putting together a performa that they can do, uh, that they can show a, a fixed a, a fixed rate of return over over the life of the debt. Right. Um, that's that's more important again for them. They they can pay the cash up front as long as they can show the show that they're they're covering it. But this is this will be a, an, an expensive project to, to make happen, and yeah, no 
you're, for you, you do need to recognize that a proposal that comes from them will have a TIF rebate request in it. Um, and, and you'll have to mull that over as to whether you feel comfortable with that um, over the next couple of weeks, too. Well, the keeping in mind that there's other proposals that are for other buildings in this town that's going to come forward that uh, the, the others are looking at. I mean, the typewriter shop is one of them that mm -hmm. comes to mind. And, and, and also keeping in mind that we've had, I think, three turned down now from right. for that kind of funding in the recent months. So. The other thing I'd put in there, you've committed to on backstopping using TIF funding to do the demo on this, and we're talking right. 600000 potentially cost on that. So, and then, I mean, you may be able to recoup it through selling the land, but you might not. You just, this is a little bit different than the others in terms of we've taken ownership of this property, and so we are kind of a partner on it. But you are, are correct. We have, we, we, we've, We've turned down some pr proposals in the past. We've. I'm not saying we turned down. The state turned down the funding. Well, yeah. yeah. The the last project that was done, the Salter School, if they did, I have no clue what happened with with the way that, but if it would have been listed in more categories than it was, whether they neglected to list it in more categories than they did, or the state just didn't catch it on the form. Um, However that happened, if it would have been in the right category, it could have been funded. But be that as it, be that as it may, it wasn't. Uh, that being said, though, this project can score in the same range. It loses some points for some areas uh, just because of the year uh, that there was. We already had a, we had a project funded down Maple on Hills apartments. Ma for Maple Hills apartments, so they lose some points. Uh, based off of timing of projects being funded. But they can gain some that they couldn't get on this Alter School site. And they'll, they'll kind of have to address that themselves because that goes beyond my understanding and memory. Um, they can show me, we can walk through a form, which we did a couple of weeks ago, looking at how it scores. I just can't remember the categories. Right on. While we're, while we're on projects, where, where are they at on the table? We should have building plans probably in the next week or two. And their, work, their architect was finalizing the actual building construction plans. And that's the last I'd heard was- Do you know if they've gotten approval from SHPO for- and The last I'd heard, I think on the majority of it, they're still waiting on that back annex if they'd be able to dem demolish that part or if they had incorporated it, so. And, and really for getting that. building plans from them, that's been what they've delayed on is waiting. Waiting for SHPO to- because their, their ideal would be to demo that, that interior piece on the back or on the north side in the, on the alleyway. Um, if they're not allowed that from SHPO, it changes what their design would be. And is this the best word? Good. You guys good? It's, it's not the answer we want to be able to give. We'd like to be able to say what we, that there's a definite time where it's moving forward. But. Well, the, all their equipment was Gone and yeah. The fence is still up. That's why. Yeah, Eric, there, is there something that we can work on? That's. I'll get a. I'll contact. Because it would be nice yeah. to have that down, if if we're not going to have something definite happening. Especially by Friday. Yeah. Especially what? Especially by Friday. Yes. Yeah. There's the. Sip, yeah, sip taste and stroll. <laughs> it's kind of a hassle though. Yeah, uh, Andy Anderson, 119 South Adams Street. Uh, as uh, the city manager pointed out, him and Eric were up at our neighborhood association meeting, and I think they got a pretty good uh, drift of what the neighborhood's interested in. And I'll tell you, it's fine to talk about art centers and all that, but that's a pretty big elephant up there, and it's going to take an awful lot of grant money, and I'm not sure somebody can get that. We are interested, if we can, and uh, it works out, that you do look at these two outfits that are talking about doing something with the current building. And the one we really like is the one where they're talking about doing some infrastructure 
with housing around that. Now, is that going to be feasible? I'm not sure. But all done and said, we have had all kinds of people promise they're going to do something with that building, and all it's been is a tax write-off for people out in California, New York, Indiana, you name it. And uh, I think sooner or later, if we can't get any uh, interest in doing something up there, then we need to tear it down. And the bottom line is, I don't know if to defray the cost, there's a lot of people went to Burlington, or went to Apollo High School, Burlington High School, and might be interested in buying a brick, you know, and these kind of things. So I know that's not going to cover the cost of the demolition, but, you know, every little bit helps. But so if we get a tear down, that, by gosh, we're going to sell some bricks. And, and with, with that, I appreciate that you are looking into this. We appreciate the city has gotten sincere about acquiring the building. So hopefully, if you can't get it sold to somebody, maybe it has to be demolished. I would think that would be a beautiful view up there on top of that hill. Might have to do some work with the neighborhood right around there, but someplace, you know. And uh, I'll tell you, I lived out in the country. And I like living in the city. I like living in the city of Burlington. And it's convenient to get to the hospitals, which older folks got to do. We like to go downtown. You can walk down there. You walk down to Steamboat Days or whatever. So anyway, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good points on the bricks. <laughs> we can sell some bricks. Got it. Got it. Audit direction. services proposal. You got the direction you need then, city yeah. manager? Okay, um, we went out for bid for our audit three years ago, so time flies. Um, so we're up for, um, we went out for proposals again. They're due back on May 4th. Um, the reason I'm asking the council is, as part of the audit committee, two people last time sat on the um, audit committee. Basically, we'll review the um, proposals when they come in and decide who we might recommend. I'd like to do the recommendation and approval on um, the May 16th meeting. So. Um, I'd like to meet on Thursday, May 5th, to go over the proposals. They're due Wednesday the 4th, if we have any volunteers. And I think Bob might have sat on it last time, so we could ask him, too, if just we could get one person tonight. And if we don't get two people, we can still move forward and review them. Jim's on the audit committee, myself and Annette. So. What, time, what time are you talking about? I don't have a time yet, so I'm open. Um, I could do it, but I have a... Four o'clock that I have to be at on that day. If it's at four, then I got you. Why don't we just, why don't we just plan on doing that? Because I'll be here. Uh, it's my birthday. I'll be here on the afternoon. What right. time then? So, you, if it's four o'clock or after, I'll take it. And if it's before, you got it. Or is that, is that what you wanted to do? Or? Yeah, that, that's that, that works. That, that. Can you play okay. that? Can you play that by ear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't have to do it. I'm, I'm just volunteering if you. Yeah, and if anybody me. else. If he's going to be here. I'll be here. I'll be here. So you go ahead. Go ahead. Shane can do it. Well, and then if any, another one, or maybe ask yeah. Bob, or does it matter? I'll check with Bob. I'll check with Bob. Okay. And yeah, see, that's fine. You know, I don't if, know. If when is Bob do here? It, I, I don't think Bob, I'm not sure Bob's going to be here. Oh, okay. okay. I see. Is, was he well, in if Texas? it's after, yeah. you know, when, what do we say? May 5th, you said? May 16th. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, May 5th. May 5th. Oh, May 5th for the. Meeting. Meeting. Um, yeah, so long as it's, uh... 3.30? Yeah. Or 4, yeah. 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 Anytime after that. Okay. I I, I'll send out, like I said, I'll send out. We're getting, everything is due that Wednesday night at 5, so that'll give me time to look them over and then we can discuss them. And, yeah. and then it will just be presented at the next work session, then to be approved on the 16th, okay. so. Okay. It's fine if you guys want to do it, that's great. Okay. It won't take long to review <laughs> We can handle that. Okay. Anything before we close out? <coughs> you want to check these two um, appointments on commissions here. Has anybody got any issues with the appointments? You looked them over. Are you okay? Okay. Are you okay with them? <coughs> yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's ever a time that you guys aren't okay with appointments, just let me know before the meeting. Uh, oh, before. <laughs> so I'll bring it up. Otherwise, I just kind of skim over it. E.T., do you have anything? No. Do you have anything before we close out? No. Good. Uh, Mr. Scott? Uh, just that, oh, uh, uh, 
on Millard's property west of the depot, there's a there's a storm sewer out in the street, and right in line with that, right next to the sidewalk is a hole that's about two and a half foot deep. And it looks like it might be tied to the storm sewer or something, but I'm a little concerned that right where it's at, somebody's going to step off in it and break a bone. Is that something that you check on, Chris? You're talking about the west side of Main Street? Yeah, it's on the west side of Main Street. So the hole's probably this big now. <coughs> One thing I've got is uh, spring cleanup. Uh, this week is Tuesday. Next week is Wednesday. So if you got some stuff to set out, uh, set it out. I know Mayor Pro Tem set some stuff out, and uh, people came and picked it up right away. So, Mr. Davidson, must have been good stuff for somebody. It's good stuff That's for somebody. That's how that works, you know. That's right. I was out at the golf course this morning. It's in great shape, folks. <laughs> you need to get out there. Yeah, <laughs> We're still missing a response from... Um, I'll, I'll get a hold of him. I'm going to call him tonight and see what's okay. for that date. I'll let you know to, uh, first thing. Yeah. <clears throat> if, we, if we don't get something back too soon, we'll probably lose those dates. But So... I think there's two different dates to choose yep. from, and if you're not, I don't know if you've talked to Katie, but she can get you the dates that are available. I got them. Okay. And I, I'll, I'll be calling Bob tonight. I'll okay. Anything else? That's it. Okay. Good night. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.